very much. Um, it's been it's been great to be back at uh, ITMA after four years. Um, it's been a strange four years. Uh, the last time we met at ITMA four years ago in Barcelona, we everyone, not only us, but everyone presented this plan about how we see the future of the industry and how we think uh, thought things would evolve um, in the industry in the upcoming years. Um, looking back, um, it's been quite different. No one knew we were going to hit, go into a pandemic uh, very quickly. Um, so a lot of the developments we see is um, we had a little setback in the textile industry, especially with the fashion going down a lot, people in lockdown and uh, not buying uh, fashion. Um, but it also triggered a very big um, um, growth in the home decoration and home textiles industry that uh, we were able to uh, still have a really good um, uh, business in our textile uh, segment. Where we are now, we see that the fashion volumes are coming back. Um, with the fashion co volumes coming back, we actually, what we thought was going to happen four years ago is the same thing what we think is going to happen now, um, with one big difference, I think. Four years ago, everyone was talking about sustainability and the need to be more sustainable. Uh, no one was denying that four years ago, but no one had real solutions. If we look at ITMA today, um, it's the same message. Uh, the industry needs to become more sustainable. We have to take care of our earth. But we see a lot of companies bringing actual solutions this time. So what this four years of delay, so to say, actually uh, brought us was time to actually develop sustainable solutions rather than only talking about the need to be sustainable. At Mimaki, we also um, are presenting um, um, more sustainable solutions uh, at ITMA this year. So we have three big um, developments um, focusing on sustainability and circularity. One is we brought a new Tiger 600, 1800 TS uh, direct, uh, not direct, uh, sublimation transfer printer. The difference from the previous one is there's a very high productivity. We're talking about 550 square meter per hour in a practical mode, so it's a usable print mode, um, which actually brings a level of productivity that can help analog printers to step into digital printing, which everyone knows is way more sustainable than analog printing, which consumes a lot of water, waste, uh, etc. The second thing is about the move to natural fibers. Um, a lot of companies are looking into printing with pigment, uh, textile pigment inks, which is they need to because of the increasing use of blended fibers, whereas we used to have more pure fibers, which all have their own ink technology. Um, the transition into blended fibers actually um, means people need to look at a completely different sort of ink technology, which so far has been only working with pigment ink. Um, but the move to pigment ink is quite difficult because in Sublimation, we have sublimation transfer technology, which means it's quite easy. Um, it doesn't require a lot of special knowledge. It doesn't require a lot of very special equipment. And it actually can be done with a um, relatively low investment. You don't need to have very big machines or complicated machines. Whereas when, when you want to do direct printing, it is, it is a very big step. So if we look at the digitalization of textile print, we can see that on polyester fibers, it has been way more digitalized already um, than the other fibers, which is mainly driven by um, the sublimation transfer technology being very easy and very reachable for smaller companies as well. A big innovation we have at ITMA this year is that we are bringing a textile pigment transfer technology, which basically means that um, printing a textile pigment ink on a special pigment transfer paper um, allows people to print on all kinds of different fibers, including blended fibers, natural fibers, cottons, whatever you name it, um, in basically the same way as you can do with sublimation transfer, meaning low investment, no need of special knowledge, uh, no consumption of water, so it's 100% water free. Um, and with this, we believe we can bring sustainable digital textile printing also to the other areas and not only stick to polyester fibers.
The third thing we have, which is, um, which is still a concept, um, is we have a technology or methodology to discharge sublimation ink from polyester fiber. So basically what we can do is we can reverse the transfer process, um, turning a sublimated fiber, uh, textile into a white textile by completely removing the ink and without changing the structure or the quality of the textile, meaning we can reprint it um, into something else. And this we cannot do only one time, but we can do this multiple times. Our internal testing so far, we have done this up to 20 times without any noticeable difference in the textile. And this means polyester can be reused. So recycling is very difficult in case of polyester. I mean, fiber to fiber recycling is, is very complex um, and not really applied yet in the industry. But if we could reuse the same textile by removing the ink and putting a different print and even doing this multiple times, we get a 100% circular system, um, which greatly reduces our environmental footprint. We can see textile print is, is rising very rapidly in, in um, I think, the last two years, um, especially in, in areas like South Africa, we have seen textile printing increasing a lot. Um, um, our textile business over there grew a lot, um, especially on the entry level side. Uh, what we see in, the, the, in North Africa, the Maghreb countries, we can see an increasing um, production or, or increase of production and adoption of digital print also. Um, especially the ones moving away from Southern European countries. So there's a big move from Southern European countries to North African countries. Um, and we believe that the, um, uh, the future growth in, in mainly those areas is going to be very, very big. So looking looking at the um, at, at the at the future of textile digital textile printing in general, um, we still expect very very big growth over. I mean, no one is able to give an exact percentage in in an exact time frame. But if we look at the move from analog to digital so far, um, everyone has seen this as a booming business. But if we look at the actual amount of printed textile that changed from analog to digital, it's still only a very very small portion. So thinking about the small portion that has been transformed to digital printing so far has been seen as a booming business. It only shows the potential of how booming this can become because it is undeniable that the remaining part of textile printing needs to go into digital printing to be, become more environmental. And no one argues about the need of being more environmental as a textile industry.